Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We've been to some fun and amazing places in our travels with Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Today, we're taking a look back at some of our favorite stories. The ones that had everyone talking. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks so much for joining us. Over the years, we've met a lot of interesting people and seen a lot of cool places, and we'll share some of those stories with you today. So let's get started. We begin in Nashville, where the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show returns in 2017. The last time convention stopped in Nashville was 2014. That's when Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Sharon Alseth got a behind-the-scenes look at the Opperland Hotel, one of the largest and most amazing hotels you'll ever visit. Once you check into the Gaylord Opryland Resort, don't expect to see the outside world for a couple of days. And why would you need to? This massive facility has more than enough amenities to satisfy the needs of any guest. People are amazed um, just at, at the magnitude of this place. I mean, as one of the largest combined convention and resort hotels in the country, there's a lot to explore. So Gaylord Opryland Resort has 2,882 rooms, all on one campus. Inside our nine acres of indoor gardens, you'll find more than 50,000 tropical plants. And you can't forget about our quarter mile long river inside our Delta Atrium. One of the amazing things about Gaylord Opryland is that we keep our atriums at 72 degrees year round. So even in the middle of winter, it's a perfect tropical paradise. The Opryland Hotel first opened in 1977 with 600 rooms and has expanded over the years into the massive multiplex it is today. Of course, country music is one of the first things people think of when they think of Nashville, and the Opryland Resort works hard to offer guests all the excitement and energy of Music City under one roof. Music City is what Nashville is known as, and we have tried really hard to bring that into the, the resort experience here at the hotel. One of the things that we hear from our guests all the time is how much they love our proximity to the Grand Ole Opry House next door. We also have live music at our Opry Backstage Grill. Uh, a lot of our restaurants here at the hotel offer live music. And you've got to head downtown, experience the Wild Horse Saloon, line dancing. It's an experience unto itself. This is the largest non-gaming hotel facility in the continental United States, so finding your way around can sometimes be a challenge. Jenny has some useful advice to help you get around the hotel. If you're visiting the hotel for the first time, one of the tips that I recommend is um, have some comfortable shoes. There, there is a lot of walking involved, and as we like to say around here, calories don't count at Opryland. You are gonna get a bit of exercise going from point A to point B. And then another fun trick is that um, our map, you'll notice the colors of the carpet correspond with the color coding on the map. So for example, if you're in our Delta section, the carpets are red. If you're in the convention, the carpet centers are blue. Um, it's a good, good little hint. As you can imagine, the food is an important point to consider with a beef convention in town. Opryland chefs are hard at work making sure there are plenty of beef choices on the menus for the thousands of members of the cattle industry staying at the resort. My team typically starts right around 2 o'clock in the morning for breakfast and, uh, and then goes all the way lunch and dinner and then my second shift starts at 2 o'clock and they work until about 10 o'clock at night. You'll be happy to know that beef is on the menu year round, not just when the cattle industry comes to town. We serve uh, several hundred thousands of pounds per year of beef in general just on our, our banquet uh, side of the facilities. We do anything from braising, smoking, grilling, and pan searing. So for groups of 20 all the way up to 6,500. Beef is, is so flexible because you can fully cook it and cook it to the point where it, it's just awesome and tender and then you can just pan sear certain cuts or, or put them on the char grill and then it's perfectly cooked as well. It's so versatile. Over the years, I cannot begin to tell you how many hundreds of thousands of pounds of beef that we have uh, 
serve to our customers. We have more than a dozen restaurants under one roof here, including our signature steakhouse, Old Hickory Steakhouse, and our banquet servers as well uh, will be serving some amazing beef dishes while you're here. With so much to see and do, as well as lots of space for meetings and the trade show, the Gaylord Opryland Resort is an ideal place for cattlemen and women to meet. I think it's a lot of fun for us to have the cattlemen here at Gaylord Opryland. I, there's just a spirit and an energy that's here, um, having them under, under our roof and seeing, seeing the, uh, the cowboy hats, the belt buckles, it's just so much fun for us. Reporting from the Opryland Resort in Nashville, Tennessee, I'm Sharon Alseth for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. There's plenty to see and do in Nashville outside the Opryland. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter had the chance to visit the farm of one American president who not only loved our great country, but also the cattle industry. Andrew Jackson was the seventh president in the United States. He gained his initial national fame by winning the Battle of New Orleans at the end of the War of 1812. After that, he sort of became a national hero. Today's Americans may know President Jackson for his place of honor on the $20 bill. But Andrew Jackson came from humble beginnings before being celebrated as a president and war hero. Andrew Jackson was a, um, a character would be a good word to describe him. He had come up uh, from poverty. His family was Irish immigrants. They moved to the United States or what would become the United States just before his birth. And his father died just before he was born. His mother died when he was a teenager. Both of his brothers died during the Revolutionary War. And so he had to make the way, his way in the world by himself. And uh, he didn't have the kind of education and background that a lot of the earlier presidents had had. President Jackson spent most of his career as an attorney and nearly all his adult life in Middle Tennessee. It's where he built his home, the Hermitage. Today, it's a historic museum, but in Jackson's day, it was a working farm. In his day, they grew cotton as the cash crop. They grew approximately two to 300 acres of cotton. Then they also grew corn, wheat, oats, other crops that they needed to sustain the family life and the animal life on the farm. He also had 150 slaves, so they grew several large fields of sweet potatoes and Irish potatoes. Today, Jackson's farm includes a small herd of belted Galloways, but during his time, the more than 1,100 acres were home to beef and dairy cattle. Andrew Jackson did have some livestock. He uh, had cattle, uh, probably just a few, mostly for beef purposes. Actually, after he died, his family kind of got into the dairy business and sold butter. Uh, the 1850 agricultural census uh, shows them selling a thousand pounds of butter that year. Jackson lived at the Hermitage with his wife Rachel and their adopted sons. The Hermitage still honors the couple and their legacy today. In addition to the, the farm crop, demonstration crops we grow, we have a one acre pleasure garden that is the garden that Jackson had designed for his wife Rachel. And we grow mostly the kinds of plants that would have been available in the middle 1800s. They were buried in the garden, so his tomb is here also as part of the garden. So uh, you get the full experience, his home, his first home, his tomb, uh, it's all right here. The preservation of the Hermitage is a way to honor this seventh president of the United States known as a champion of the common man. In Nashville, Tennessee, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still to come on Cattleman to Cattleman, we'll visit an outstanding San Diego steakhouse and butcher shop. And speaking of butcher shops, we'll show you a hundred year old meat market in San Antonio. Don't go away, we'll be right back. The 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show is set for the Big Easy, New Orleans, Louisiana. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention with education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the huge NCBA Trade Show, outstanding entertainment, and much more. So let's go to New Orleans for the 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, January 30th through February 1st. Details at ncba.org. 
you're looking for a do-it-all tractor, look no further than Case IH Maxim Series Tractors. With three available transmission configurations, Maxim Tractors deliver the versatility today's cattle operations demand. The Case IH Maxim provides you the maneuverability and horsepower you need to accomplish a variety of tasks. Whether you're haying, feeding, or performing loader work, the Maxim Tractor is the perfect tractor to turn your to-dos into to-dones. The new Active Drive 8 transmission allows you to work from 2 to 10 miles per hour without shifting ranges. In the cab, you'll find industry-leading operator comfort and convenience like our suspended cab and air ride seat. Maxim cabs deliver the productivity and comfort you deserve. Once you drive a Case IH Maxim Series tractor, you'll understand why customers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Talk to your Case IH dealer or visit caseih.com forward slash minute to schedule a demo. Welcome back. As you can imagine, when you have a show called Cattleman to Cattleman, you're always on the hunt for a great steak. We've been lucky enough to eat at some fantastic restaurants that proudly serve U.S. beef. Reporter Russell Nemitz tracked down an outstanding San Diego steakhouse and butcher shop in the historic Gas Lamp Quarter. Today finds us in the historic and beautiful gas lamp district of downtown San Diego. And as we get ready to set sail for San Diego for the 2016 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show, a must stop and a must do experience here in downtown San Diego is the Cowboy Star Restaurant and Butcher Shop. And with us is one of the owners, John Weber. And John, honestly, from the moment I stepped foot into your establishment here, I fell in love. It's almost like a collision of the Old West and the 21st century here. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for saying that, by the way. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, when uh, when you do step through the door, our goal is to surround you with kind of an experience, take you away from your everyday and just, just give you uh, you know, two hours where you're not thinking about uh, the outside world, and we're just gonna we're just gonna take you in and give you a great experience. You know, in the bar section, folks are gonna find out that they're gonna have a great experience there ahead of their dinner, but they're gonna probably notice there aren't any TVs, there aren't any outside world distractions, if you will. Absolutely. Like I said, our goal was to really uh, surround you with uh, the Cowboy Star experience. Uh, we call it the CSE. We want you to come in and, and not have to worry about your day-to-day -day or what's happening on the news or, or anything like that. And so that was kind of our decision was to, to make that bold statement and not have TVs in the space. You know, despite the beautiful Pacific Ocean just steps away from here in downtown San Diego, we, we need to shout it out that San Diego's a steak town. San Diego's absolutely a steak town. We've been open for about seven, just finished our seventh year. and. Uh, I would absolutely say San Diego is a steak town. Of course, we're going to have thousands and thousands of cattlemen and cattlewomen coming to San Diego the end of January for the 2016 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show. And like I said, from the moment they walk in, they're going to love the decor. Absolutely. And we want to be able to resonate with, you know, someone that, that is, you know, has an experience with the a beef industry. And, and if you look around, we have the cowhide furniture and, you know, just hopefully it, 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 it resonates with them a little bit. I, for one, like the old style round boost when you're eating a fantastic steak here at the Cowboy Star. Yeah, we wanted to we wanted to bring in that feeling of kind of the old uh, kind of the old world steakhouse, but we still wanted to have kind of a new twist on things. And so the booths were absolutely something that, in my mind, the way you know I envisioned a restaurant like this had that we just had to have them. You know, speaking of a wonderful eating experience, something fantastic here at the Cowboy Star is also the open kitchen area where folks get to have a dialogue with the very people preparing their food. Absolutely. So uh, the open kitchen is probably one of my favorite places. The uh, I would say that the chef's counter seating is the best seating in the restaurant. We wanted that to be part of the experience that we've been talking about where you can come in and talk to the person that's actually creating your food and see what they're doing and, and it becomes very interactive where we'll have guests you know asking for recipes or hey can I try that what is that a lot of times the chefs will be preparing a little something and if they have some left over say hey will you try this for me but it's a great spot to you know it's part of the show yep. and what we wanted also to do is if you're not even if you're not sitting at those seats all of the chairs and, and the, the dining room 
kind of looks at the open kitchen. There's one table, table 106, and it's for it's a really small table for two people, so it's kind of like an intimate table. It's the only table in the restaurant that faces slightly away from the, from the open kitchen. We did that on purpose. All right, now you said you're originally from Chicago, and of course back in the day a lot of cattle were railed into the old Chicago stockyards. How did you come up with bringing, you know, an old-style steakhouse into this area of San Diego? Well, my mom would kill me because I'm actually originally from Indiana. I lived okay. in Chicago. Uh, so I grew up, you know, I grew up seeing farms and of course ours were all soybean and corn. But the idea of bringing a steakhouse to San Diego was, um, it was kind of a, a, something that I saw that was a little, it was missing in San Diego. And it was that, that concept that kind of was based on the old west. And, and growing up in the Midwest, the, the west is just this very, um, it's this very romantic thing, you know, and it's like you watch it on TV, and I grew up watching these old black and white movies of, of uh, you know, these cowboys, and there was a good guy and a bad guy, and you always knew who was who, <laughs> because, you know, by the music that was playing or by the hat they were wearing, and, and if you wanted to go from point A to point B, you just got on your horse and you rode that way. And it was just such a simpler time, and so, you know, my idea with creating a restaurant that was just based on the Old West, as I started to really put it together, I thought, you know what, I wanted to, I wanted, I want more people to get involved with this and, and to have a, and I wanted to touch them. So I started to really think about that same time for, period, the 20s and 30s, and, and, and you know, how could I romanticize the Old West a little bit? And so I kept going back to Hollywood in the 20s and 30s. And, you know, yeah. champagne bottles popping and cabaret. And so uh, uh, I put those two ideas together, the West and Hollywood, and came up with the Hollywood Cowboy Star, and so that's really how we got the name of Cowboy Star was the combination of those two ideas. Well, you guys have done a fantastic job, and one more time for all those cattlemen and cattlewomen coming to San Diego at the end of January for the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. You promised they're going to have one of the greatest beef eating experiences they've ever had. I don't promise it, I guarantee it. They will absolutely love what they're having. Uh, we're, we're just showcasing their hard work, to tell you the truth. We're just taking all their hard work and putting it on a plate and doing our best to really uh, showcase what they're doing. There you go. Folks, I promise you, you're going to love it here at the Cowboy Star in downtown San Diego. Reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, I'm Russell Nimitz. You know, there's nothing quite like the experience of visiting your local butcher to pick up a top quality steak or roast. In San Antonio, there's a meat market that has been proudly serving customers for more than a century. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brad Bulla had a chance to visit this iconic business. Believe it or not, this building has been standing on this corner in San Antonio for more than 100 years. And you may not be able to tell from the outside, but a quick step inside proves that Bolner's Meat Market is a business built on high quality beef. We started in 1914, 100 years ago. My grandfather started his mercantile store. We used to sell everything. About 1932, my Uncle Dave got out of the Army and started the meat market. And that's how we got in the meat business, about 1932. Beef is a big part of what we do. You know, this is a family-owned and operated business, and it's been center of the plate and has taken a bunch of the attention of the company. It's what we do. Bolner's is famed for its quality meat and skilled butchers. At the heart of the business is the pristine display counter, where USDA Prime, Choice, and Akaushi beef is cut to order for customers. Bolner's has a long-standing reputation for quality and service, and that's one thing we're not going to skimp on. We do a bunch of different style cutting. We're all old-fashioned meat cutters. Here we still break carcasses. We get swinging cattle in here, so by doing that, we're not limited on what we can do. We're not limited to box beef. We do a lot of personalized chuck roast. People say, Joe, I like my chuck roast two and a half inches. We'll cut a chuck roast at two and a half inches. If people say, Joe, can I get a prime brisket? Sure, we've got prime briskets. Can you trim my prime brisket? And we say yes. You know, there's a lot of different things that we do that people appreciate. The customers here love what we do. You know, I always tell them, I can give you bad advice, I can give you a bad direction, but I'm not going to give you a bad steak. And we're going to cut them the way you like them, I guarantee you. It's not just San Antonio families that are fond of Bolner's. The business ships beef to customers all across the U.S. You don't get to stay in business this long without offering a high quality product. 
One key lesson they've learned at Boldner's is that good beef starts on the ranch. Our focus all these years has been on providing quality beef to the customers, and the beef industry has helped us a lot and provided you know, the, the better quality meat, and we just try to make it better. Our focus here is to put the best available product out to our customers at all time. You know, we shop the market, industry market all the time, and we're always looking for the best quality. By far, we're not price buyers. We want quality for our customers, and we want the best out there all the time. And we have a saying here, we say, we cut them the way you like them. So we're gonna cut a steak, you know, just the way you like it. We're gonna prepare and wrap your meat exactly the way you want it. If you're looking for great beef cuts, a trip to this fourth generation, family owned and operated market is definitely in order. The folks at Bolners are excited that so many members of the cattle industry are coming to San Antonio. We welcome you with open arms. Uh, we love what y'all do for the industry. Hang in there, it's a tough business and we know it and we appreciate y'all greatly. The passion and love for what y'all do in the cattle industry shows here. And we need to represent your product and we are representing your product to our customers. When you hear somebody tell you, hey, man, that's the best steak I ever had, that's the best brisket I ever had, you know, it just makes you feel good. And, it, you know, it's a living. The cattle industry has been good to us and, and the cattlemen have been good to us and we, we try to just keep it going and make it better for them. Reporting from San Antonio, Texas, I'm Brad Bola for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now we're only showing you a small number of all of the wonderful stories we've covered over the years. You can see them all on our YouTube page. You'll find replays of all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from around the country. It's also another chance to see Baxter Black. So check us out at youtube.com slash Cattleman to Cattleman. Still to come on Cattleman to Cattleman, we'll take you to Greeley Hatworks for a behind the scenes look at how they make their legendary lids. And we'll see a San Antonio museum that celebrates the art, history, and culture of the American West. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Do you know all you need to about working cattle? Did you know there are proven methods that can reduce stress for the animals, for you and your crew? Now there's an easy way for you to learn from the experts who can help sharpen your stockmanship and stewardship skills. In interactive sessions, you'll learn better ways to work cattle more efficiently, skills that can help put more money in your pocket. Find out more and locate an upcoming event near you at the website stockmanshipandstewardship.org. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season-long control, handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds, and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility. So you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide. And if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. Welcome back. Many ranchers consider it the most important part of their wardrobe. We're talking about the cowboy hat. We visited Greeley Hat Works to find out more about the function and the fashion of today's cowboy hats. Hi, I'm Trent Johnson. Welcome to Greeley Hat Works. Let me tell you about my store. Well, it started out as Greeley um, Hat and Shine Parlor in 1909 uh, in downtown Greeley. And um, it was started by two Greek brothers. I'm actually the fourth hat maker to own it. Um, and I was at Prentice here for three and a half years before I bought it. First thing is definitely very much co customer based is being able to, to talk to the customer about you know, besides just color and style, but what's the function of the hat? How do they wear a hat? How are they gonna use the hat? That only not helps us determine kind of how to build it, not just for dimensions and shape, but also helps us give recommendations and suggestions on what quality of hat they should get and why. 
We have got to build hats for lots of famous folks, like uh, I think the last 10 presidents of the NCBA. That was at the top, and then after that, you know, we got to do President Bush a few times. And then he hooked us up with some other people, like uh, Vladimir Putin, and Secretary General of the United Nations, the Emir of Kuwait, Rudy Giuliani, lots of other people. Really, uh, the importance of having something handcrafted, because, I mean, there are nice machine-made hats. I mean, a lot of the Brand X type big box hat companies, they do have some nice products, but there's no ownership of that hat. We don't, I don't, I'm not running a, a, a factory here. My whole thing is about the ownership of the hat. So when an order comes in, whether it's an individual or a store, one of my guys or gals gets that order from start to finish, except for the parts, you know, like Sharon prints all the sweatbands and sews them together. But as far as building the hats, everybody gets and puts their initials in it. So if the customer's really happy, we know who built the hat. And if, there's a, if there is an issue, there's no passing the buck. It isn't like, oh yeah, uh, processor number 14 forgot to do that part of the step. And we all take great ownership in being able to build good products. So one of the fun things about either, you know, coming into our store here in Greeley, visiting one of our retail partners or finding us at a show on the road is being able to help create your hat. You know, so in our store and a lot of our trade show displays, we have a lot of hats like these that are open and flat that haven't been shaped. And these are just waiting for owners to give them the character that they need. I mean, uh, creases in hats are very personal. It's kind of an extension of your personality. So on this one, this is a nice light tan hat called a, uh, this is called Sahara. This is a binding and a 12 line ribbon. This gives it a little bit of an old west flair, uh, but it's still a very functional hat. And then when you go in a little bit more contemporary, a lot of the newer hats have um, more of a shoveled or squared crease across here. Once again, now we've still got a ribbon band on here, but this is a kind of a, a, a spin off of the uh, open road type ribbon without the tails, something we hear we call it a J bow. But once again, the, the binding on most hats is doesn't really serve a function as much as of, of a type of style. Now this is one of our my most favorite colors. This is natural beaver. There's no bleach or dye. It's a very nice neutral color. It's the same color as dirt and it'll go with anything your wife makes you wear. So this one is always a safe bet. Um, our buckle sets on all of our beaver blends and pure beavers um, are sterling silver hand engraved made here in the U.S. by Americans. I know it's a novel concept but it still does happen. And then as we were talking earlier about some of the upgrades, this is a finger carved sweatband. So it's all hand carved. We could put your name in there, we could put a brand or something. And once again, um, it really doesn't serve a function, but it, it looks really nice and uh, would definitely make any owner proud. Same quality as all of our other hats. The PBR line has um, a PBR buckle, uh, PBR markings on the inside on the sweatband and the liner. But once again, could be customized in nine different colors and about any type of style. So uh, a lot of what we see around the US um, especially with uh, national cattlemen's and more, more beef and producers and farmers and ranchers, is more of a cattleman style. Um, once again, it's probably not out of function anymore as much as it used to be, but I mean, this is what dad wore, this is what grandpa wore, so it's gonna kinda be uh, your own type of family tradition. But we put lots of different spins on it and can make any kind of hat you'd like. Every day, the NCBA staff here in Denver and in Washington, D.C. is working on the issues that matter to cattle producing families. You can help in the fight for our industry's future by becoming an NCBA member. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or you can visit the website ncba.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll head to Arkansas for the sizzle, the steak, and the fun at the World Championship Steak Cook-Off. Don't go away, we'll be right back.
what job I've got to do, my John Deere 5E tractor can do it all. Whether I'm cutting, moving feed, or building a fence. Using my 5E means my work gets done faster at a price I can afford, and that works for me. You're watching NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman on RFD-TV. The art, tradition, and culture of the American West is like none other. In San Antonio, we found a museum dedicated to preserving that unique and special history. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Sharon Alseth had the chance to visit this impressive museum for a private tour. Well, I think uh, what we do here that's really special is to show that the American West is still alive and thriving. It's not just about history. While we have a lot of artifacts, even things that date back to the Alamo, um, Spanish colonial works, we also have a lot of contemporary paintings. The building that opened as San Antonio's first central library back in 1930 is now home to the Briscoe Western Art Museum. The Art Deco neoclassical building houses art and artifacts not only representing the history of Texas, but that of cattle country and the great American West. You know, San Antonio is one of the most iconic cities of the American West. Of course, everyone knows about the Battle of the Alamo, and the Alamo is just a couple blocks away from here. Um, so there's really no better place for this museum. And even right, being right on the river walk, on the San Antonio River, um, we're right next to one of the oldest known crossings. So literally thousands of cattle crossed right here by the museum. So there's a lot of history in this location. The museum houses both original and replica pieces dating back to the mid-1800s. Popular exhibits throughout the nine galleries include a recreation of the Battle of the Alamo and an authentic reproduction of a Wells Fargo stagecoach, as well as oil paintings, clothing, and more from the American West. Yes, so right behind me is an authentic chug wagon by John Deere. It was owned by someone here in town who used to be a, or still is, a champion chug wagon cook. And um, in this gallery, it's the Governor Dolph Briscoe Jr. Gallery. The theme here is work. And so we've got the chuck wagon. You may hear the sounds behind me of a windmill that came from a ranch in New Mexico. And then other paintings that evoke work. And then also firearms, saddles, that type of thing. There's also a beautiful sculpture garden that's perfect for enjoying the San Antonio weather and an entire exhibit that focuses on saddles and spurs. Just in this adjacent gallery is our uh, San Antonio Livestock Show and Rodeo Saddles and Spurs Gallery, and we have two large cases, one that exhibits over 100 spurs, and then right across from it, one that exhibits different saddles, and including um, Pancho Villa's last known saddle that's in that gallery. There's so many great pieces, and the gallery next to us is the Enrique and Lydia Guerra and Family Gallery. Um, he's a collector of the finest Spanish colonial Mexican pieces, and there's a saddle in that gallery from the 17th century that is a Spanish saddle. It's actually embroidered silk. I've, I mean, you'll never see anything like it here in the New World, as they say, so you'd have to go to uh, Spain to see something like that. It's a really extraordinary piece. So saddle up and consider a visit to the Briscoe Western Art Museum. Reporting from San Antonio, Texas, I'm Sharon Alseth for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. As passionate as we cattlemen are about producing beef, I'm thankful there are consumers who are equally passionate about grilling and eating great beef. One of the great celebrations of grilling beef happens every May in Magnolia, Arkansas. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter John Robinson gives us a taste of the World Championship Steak Cook-Off.
Today was a great event here in Magnolia. It was the 25th annual World Championship State Cook-Off. But you're talking 81 cooking teams from all over the United States. It brings about 20,000 people to a little town in Magnolia, Arkansas that is really only 11,000 people at any given day. There are some really, really good cooks here. I mean, there's some folks come from all over the United States here. Tell us a little bit about your rig and what makes it unique. Well, uh, our, our rig is, is made from scrap metal from the ground up. The only thing that was bought was the axle that it's riding on and the tank here that was an old propane tank. So everything was built from scrap. It's really, a, it's kitchen on wheels. And so uh, we, we love it and we love cooking steaks right there. My boy BV, he cooks it up and he cooks it up right every time, so. This cooker is part of our family. It's um, a cooker that went through the EF4 tornado in uh, Mayflower, Arkansas. 190 mile an hour winds. We, we found the, uh, the rig, you know, away from the house. It was um, quite a distance, upside down. As you can tell, one of the stove pipes is bent, but it was found eight inches in the ground. Number one, it's the size, I think. Um, this, is, this was built to cook steaks. It's about 8,000 pounds, it's 22 feet long. We've got four pits, and we put about uh, 25 pounds of charcoal in each one. And you know we can cook about 100 steaks at a time. We get about 25 at each pit. But the key is the thickness, because most grills are made of a much thinner metal. These are made out of three-quarter inch thick steel. So it holds heat. I can do over a thousand degrees at the grate without flare. I'm a, I'm a big believer in hot and fast when it comes to being. Uh, I can do a medium ribeye in under six minutes. Um, of course, I let it rest a little bit after that. But uh, high, hot heat sears it, seals in your juices, seals in your flavors. Your favorite cut of steak? Uh, ribeye. Ribeye is my favorite. I'm a ribeye man. Ribeye, bar none. Um, you know, of course, you get the strips, you get the sirloins, and you get the fillet. But for us, the ribeye, it's it's marbled with flavor. It, it's surrounded by flavor, and and you just cannot go wrong with a ribeye. We enjoy good steaks in Magnolia, Arkansas, and we do appreciate all those farmers' hard work. There are many great reasons to become a member of NCBA, and one of them is the chance to read The National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. A subscription is included free of charge when you become a member. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or you can visit the website ncba.org. Still ahead, we'll have the latest from Baxter Black. Plus, we'll swing by the oldest saloon in Texas. Stay with us. We'll be right back. At Case IH, we believe it's our job to provide you with solutions. That's why our Farmall and Maxim tractors, as well as our tools and attachments, are designed with you in mind. From mowing to baling to loading and more, we're here to help turn your to-dos into to-dones. At Case IH, we'll keep your days running smoothly with equipment that's durable, versatile, and highly efficient. No wonder farmers are more loyal to Case IH than any other brand. Visit your local dealer or go to caseih.com forward slash livestock for more. Are you concerned about the impact government policies could have on your cattle business? One way to make your voice heard in Washington is by joining NCBA. When you join, you'll have access to key policy updates and insights from Beltway Beef. It's the best way to hear directly from NCBA's DC team. Beltway Beef provides valuable policy information and it's free for NCBA members. Stay in touch with Beltway Beef. Join now at ncba.org. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the uh, 
Brina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. I have to admit, in our travels, we've stopped by a water hole or two for a nice, cool beverage. But not many places we visited are as unique as the one we're about to show you. Brian Baxter takes us to the Buckhorn Saloon, a must-see in San Antonio. All it takes is one look at Texas Bob Reinhardt to realize the Buckhorn Saloon is not your typical watering hole. More than 130 years old, this historic bar and museum is located right in the heart of San Antonio. It was started by a young entrepreneur who had the brilliant idea to accept horns and antlers in exchange for free beer or whiskey from his saloon. Well, the Buckhorn Saloon was established in 1881 by Albert Frederick. He was a 17-year-old bartender and bellhop at the old Southern Hotel on Main Plaza. In 1881, he decided to open his own saloon across the street, called it the Buckhorn. He was a hunter himself, so he brought some of his own trophies in to decorate with. Then his friends would come inside, I've got a bigger rack than that at home. He said, bring it in, I'll hang it up. And then he collected trophies for years from big game hunters donated. He'd buy trophies he liked, he'd take them and trade if people owed him money. We also have a cafe on site that's open for lunch every day from 11 to 3. A wonderful gift shop and as you can see right behind me, a saloon. And that is the original back bar that was uh, opened in 1881. It's made of cherry wood and marble columns and that's the original mirror from 1881 as well. Over the years, San Antonio's most popular saloon has welcomed famous Americans such as Teddy Roosevelt and Will Rogers. They all came to get a look at one of the world's largest and most unique collections of horns, antlers, and animals. The exhibit halls showcase over 520 species of wildlife, many of which are record holders. Well, one of the icons is right behind me here, old Tex. He, at one time, he was the world record longhorn steer. His horns measure eight feet, one and a quarter inches from tip to tip. When he was on displaying the saloon back at the turn of the last century, every night when Albert closed up shop, he detached the horns and locked them in his safe. There's a story behind every animal that we have here on display. In fact, we have a gorilla upstairs in the African room, and you'll notice that he has no hair on his chest. Well, in the old, old days, people, he was in the front area of the buckhorn, and people would come by and rub his chest, so all the hair you know, came off of his chest. And, we just have stories like that throughout the entire museum, and it, it's just something for everybody, I think, all, all, all ages. Also at the Buckhorn is the Texas Ranger Museum, which houses hundreds of ranger artifacts, including weapons, badges, photographs, and more. They were the first uh, law enforcement organization in Texas, started in 1823. At that time, I think there were eight or ten rangers initially to protect the settlers and now there are uh, maybe 125 or so. They're kind of like the FBI of Texas, if you will. They have jurisdiction in any county to help local law enforcement solve the bigger cases. The collection we have on display in the Ranger Museum belongs to the former Texas Rangers Association, and uh, we augmented that by building a, a kind of a recreation of old San Antonio inside. We have a blacksmith shop, we have the original Buckhorn Saloon in there from 1881, we've got a dentist office, a barber shop, a jailhouse, and a reproduction of Bonnie and Clyde's car because the Texas Rangers brought down Bonnie and Clyde in Louisiana. The Buckhorn Saloon and Museum has always been known as a gathering place for good conversation, food, drink, and spectacular wildlife, something members of the cattle industry are sure to appreciate. Please come and visit. We have horns from all over the world, antlers, all sorts of critters, and it's going to be right up your alley. You know, all of the staff here is, we're just like a big family and everybody has a big personality and it's a just really fun place to work, a fun place to visit. So we are a historic Texas treasure and a real sight to see if you're visiting San Antonio. Reporting from San Antonio, Texas, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Up next, it's time once again for a good friend, Baxter Black. 
Stay with us. We'll be right back. There is a new world out there, revealing itself in unpredictable ways. A world that demands more from the land and those who grow, farm, and build on it. This new world calls for the ingenuity to get more out of it while preserving as much as we can. After all, to stay ahead of tomorrow, we need to be equipped for it today. If Baxter makes you laugh, you're at the right place. He has an offer, of course this is a commercial, six hour long DVDs filled with live shows, Emmy winning comedy, all Baxter at his best. And the price is right, 25 bucks plus shipping. 800-654-2550 or online at baxterblack.com. You wanna know what he's like in real life? Well, kinda like you. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. I am I Global is here to help you do just that. I was in a Western store the other day when a gentleman stepped up to the counter and asked me which cap he was holding looked better. I asked if he was a baseball player or maybe a member of a rap group and he said no, no he was a horseman. Please show this fine pilgrim how he looks in a cowboy hat, I told the hat man. Well, the buyer protested and I explained that wearing a good hat was a matter of pride. He said modestly, well, I'm not a very good cowboy. I disown a couple of horses. A cap is good enough for me. I didn't mean your pride, I explained. I meant the horses. Horses are dignified animals. Unlike most other animals, they have majestic ancestor role models. They are the creatures that legends are made of. Can you think of a single other animal that could have been substituted to save the day for the man from Snowy River? Or the Lone Ranger, or Coronado, Robert E. Lee, Sir Lancelot, Sitting Bull? No, they've tried camels, and donkeys, and elephants, and even ostriches. Unfortunately, these beasts usually wind up as comic sidekicks. But when a hero needs a ride, he rides a horse, Pegasus. Sea Biscuit, Fury, Traveler, Champion, Trigger, Silver, Midnight, and Missy. And the horse is expected to live up to this grand image. Brushing, new shoes, nice tack, riders with good taste, the whole Western wear industry of designer saddles and brand name jeans is fabricated to make the horse look good. So, for my shabby horseman friend who didn't think he was qualified to dress the part by wearing a real hat, you can see the damage he might be doing to his horse's self-esteem. It's like putting the bridle on over the halter. You think the horse doesn't notice? It's like wearing your underwear outside your pants. So do your part, good horseman, and remember in riding, just like in cooking, presentation is half the meal. This is Baxter Black, from out there. Thanks so much, Baxter. Now, if you'd like to learn more about what's happening with NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman, you can find us on Facebook. Be sure to like our page, and we'll keep you updated with photos, details on upcoming shows, and much, much more. And it's a great way to connect with other cattlemen and women across the country. So check us out on Facebook. We'll have more Cattlemen to Cattlemen right after this. What does it mean to be dependable? It means you do what you say you'll do time and time again. Because performance isn't optional and your task is essential. For over 95 years, we have proven ourselves to be the most dependable choice. That's why the cattlemen of this great nation trust Ritchie to provide fresh water on demand. Ritchie, 
Proud to be a partner to the American Cattlemen since 1921. Let's go to New Orleans. That's where the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show will be in 2019. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention for the first time ever in New Orleans. A city filled with great fun, great food, and an amazing history. You can't miss it, so make plans now to go to the 2019 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in New Orleans January 30th through February 1st. Visit ncba.org for more. Welcome back. Many of you have snapped some wonderful photos over the years as you were out working on your farm and ranch. And we love sharing those pictures with our viewers. Let's take a look at this week's Legacy Photos. Want to see your photo on Cattlemen and Cattlemen? You can submit your favorite shots a couple of ways. Either message them to us on the Cattlemen and Cattlemen Facebook page or email them to c2c at beef.org. Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown, and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that's our time for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen and Cattlemen. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD-TV.